If you want to create templates in GitHub Actions or you need to reuse parts of other workflows, this video is for you. Today, in fact, I'm going to show you how to do that using the new feature that have been just introduced in the GitHub Composite Actions. Let's dive into it. Hi, everybody. Welcome back to Code with Dave, where we talk about DevOps, especially with GitHub and Azure DevOps. While I've covered all the basics of the GitHub Composite Run Step Actions in this other video over here, and therefore I will not go too much in depth into those things in this video, today I want to talk about one of the most important new features introduced in GitHub Actions in the last six months, at least for me, which is the possibility to use other actions within the Composite Actions. Until now, in fact, the Composite Actions, which basically are the templates in GitHub Actions, could only use uh, bash scripts or scripts in general, either in line in the YAML or in separate files. And of course, as you can imagine, this was pretty limiting. But now they can instead reference other actions from their marketplace or even your own custom actions, making them the de facto equivalent of the templates in Azure Pipelines, Jenkins, and so on and so forth. And of course, this also makes it much easier to reduce the duplication inside your workflows, and it's perfect for repetitive tasks. All right, enough talking. Let's see now how we can create composite actions that use other actions and how we can use them. I created this composite action repo that you can actually check after watching this video to see the full example. And in here, I want to create my new composite action. So what I'm going to do is adding a file, and we will call it action YAML. It must be called this way for GitHub to be able to recognize that this is an action or a composite action in this case. Next, you want to add a name and description to this action. And in this example, I want to do a composite action that takes care for me of building and pushing a Docker image to the Docker registry. Because this is something I do all the time. And instead of adding all the steps to a normal workflow or to each workflow in which I have to build and push a container, I would rather have it in this template and then reuse just the single template in my workflow. So first thing, I give name and the description so I know what this composite action does. Then I want to specify the inputs because I need to pass things like the credentials for the registry, the name of the image, and so on and so forth. So I'm adding this input field. And I have these four inputs. For each input, as you can see, I have the input name. I can add a description of what that input is for. And I can specify if it's required or not. In this case, the registry username, registry password, and the image name of the image I want to build are required because I need them to be able to log into the registry and to create the image. And then I can optionally specify some tag for my image. If not, I want the default to be latest. When I have my inputs in place, I can start adding the steps. I left the runs. And one important thing is that I will add this using composite. This tells GitHub that it is not a full workflow, but it's a composite action. I can add the steps. And this is as it was before. All of this we've seen until now was already there with the composite run step actions that could use only bash scripting. Here comes the new features. As I said before, I want this composite action to do build and push of Docker images for me. So first thing I want this to do is using the new build X from Docker. And to do so, I can use the setup build X action from Docker itself. And here you go. As you would do in a normal workflow, you can add actions from the marketplace. The only inconvenient here is that you do not have the marketplace window on the right side here because you're not actually composing a workflow. So you have two choices. Or as I've done here, you remember the name and the version of the action you want to use. Or you can compose this in the normal action workflow editor and then just copy and paste the steps over to your composite action. Let me add some more steps. Next thing I want to do is logging in into the Docker registry. So I can use again the Docker login action, and I can pass the username and the password from the inputs that I've added before. And this is the syntax to do so, inputs dot the name of your input. Then I want to add the tag. And as I mentioned before, the tag input is not required, is optional. 
So I have some scripting in here to decide if applying the latest tag or the tag that I pass in the inputs. And I'm outputting it as an environment variable, so I'm able to use it in the subsequent steps. And finally, I'm gonna use another action, the docker build push action, to build and push the image I just created with this format. And this is basically it. As you can see, you can add the uses with the name of your favorite actions from the marketplace. Now I just need to commit this file and we're good to go. Before we move on to see how we can actually use those composite actions in our workflows, hit the like button below if you're enjoying this video or you find it insightful so this video can be recommended to more viewers and they can benefit from it. And also, that will really mean a lot to me. Thank you. As I said before, I've created my composite action in the YAML file inside this composite action repo under my username. Let's go now to another repo and see how we can use this. We are now in this actions test repo, so it's a different repo, and I created this YAML workflow that I want to use for consuming my composite action. Let's call it build and push the image. And then I need to specify what this uses. My username, or if you are in an organization, the name of the organization you've created your composite action in, the name of your repository, which if you remember is composite action. And if you see still with the red squiggle, because it wants to have a version. Now, if you've seen my previous video, it was mandatory to use tags and releases to create a version. What we can now do is also specifying the branch. For example, I can say at main. And what this does is taking the most updated version of my action, or my composite action in this case, on the main branch. And if you remember before, I did have some inputs in my composite action that I need to specify for it to be working. And I do so using the with keyword. And in here, I give the four inputs I had defined in my composite action. The registry username and password, I'm gonna get it from the secrets. I can specify whatever image name I want. And as tag, I wanna use the GitHub run number of this specific workflow. And this is all I need to use my composite action. Let's commit this and let's try to run it. Let's go to actions. The workflow is called use the composite actions with action and let's run this. The job is starting. You can see that it's downloading the actions we've used in the composite action and everything now is running. Now that it's finished, we can analyze what happened. We have this build and push the image, which if you remember is the name I've given to the step that uses the composite action. So if I open this, you can see that we have this run composite action at main. And underneath that, we have the setup build X, we have the Docker login action, we have the bash script to identify the tag, and we have the build and push action. Everything has worked. We have this my awesome app, which is the name of the image I've given. We have the run number that I've used. And my image has been pushed to the Docker registry. One thing you may notice is that I don't see the steps like I see for the steps in the actual workflow. So I don't have a greater detail on the single steps. I only have the logs of the steps under the name I've given to the composite action usage in my workflow. But apart from that, everything else worked and also automatically this post build and push the image action has been added, which of course will have always the same name of the name of the step you use your composite action in, which does a little bit of cleanup with regards of the steps performed in the composite action. And this is how you use a composite action in your workflow. As you can see, this new capability of the composite actions is not only very useful for reducing the duplication of your code and for repetitive tasks, but also to make sure that everything needed is included in your workflows with just a single reference. And as I've mentioned, this is why I think this feature is one of the best addition to the GitHub Actions suite in the last few months. Do you agree with me? Let me know in the comment section below. I also think that when it would be possible to use custom actions from internal and private repositories, which is a feature that is actually planned for the last quarter of this year, as you can see here on the GitHub's public roadmap, 
this will be even more powerful. Let me know in the comment section below how you use or plan to use the composite run step actions and also check out this video over here in which I go through all the basics of the composite actions. But that's it for me, thanks so much for watching, I really hope you enjoyed it. Hit the like button below, subscribe if you haven't already and I see you in the next video here at Coded Dave.